Hi, my name is Maddie and I'm here today to do just a quick um, video clip about early reading in early years and perhaps bridging into some year one, um, depending on your cohort and your context. Basically, a few of my schools have got in touch that I work with and said, um, could you put together a couple of videos just outlining some of the main strategies of reading in different year groups that they can use with their parents or just a refresher for the staff who are preparing so many homeschooling packs. Um, so this one is for early reading and it's for nursery reception and as I said before, some year ones can access it. And basically, we know that reading falls under two umbrellas and um, there's a big emphasis for the decoding of reading and then we've got the comprehension. Um, and it's, it's how we get that fine balance between teaching the decoding skills and the comprehension. Now, I know that some people are making fantastic efforts of teaching phonics online videos for parents. I know that BBC Bite Size is doing lots of phonics games. Um, and I know that parents um, are keen to develop the phonics. But for me, I'm, I'm a bit worried about the comprehension skills um, because they've not got access to regular reading books, a lot of our children at home. and and. They don't have to have reading books to be able to learn comprehension skills at all. But some children might not have many books at all at home to be looking into. And we just need to make sure that their comprehension skills are kept finely tuned. Now, I don't mean, I would never say that key state um, early years children need to sit down and do a written comprehension. That's not at all what, where I'm going. And what I'm going to talk about is a resource that um, I will upload to the YouTube channel and people can download it, insert your own school name and go with it. And the resource is based around the book you choose. If you have been on my training before, you will have seen me talk about this book and it is the one book if I was stranded on a desert island and I had to teach every year group, I would take this one because I know I could do it. Um, it is a definite turn to book and I know the new one, um, You Choose Fairy Tales, is out this month. So I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Um, I don't write the books, by the way. I sound like I'm doing a bit of a... Trying to get a sales pitch there. It's all Mick Sharrett and Pippa Goodhart. So the resource that I'm suggesting, if you've not seen you choose, um, it is a book that is pretty much wordless. There's just a few questions in it. Um, I'm going to focus on the transport page today because that's the one that I've printed out to show you. So as you can see, it becomes a firm favourite with lo lots of our children. And all I've done is that for some of the pages, I've created a resource, which is kind of like a pecking order of questioning that goes from skimming and scanning through to inference and being able to justify your opinion. So for each of the pages, not I haven't done it for every page, but for many of the pages, there will be a resource that looks like this. It's really easy to follow. So um, it's definitely something that could be sent home for parents or older siblings to do with their younger um, siblings who are doing early reading. So I've just put down some of the vocabulary related to the page. So words like pedlo um, and convertible car, roller skates, tandem bike, um, sedan chair, double decker bus, a little bit of language for our children related to transport. And the idea is that the children find and point. So the person who's leading the activity would say, find and point to the pedlo find and point to the double-decker bus, find and point to the witch on the broomstick, find and point to Santa in his sleigh. And it's really important that they hear that find and point instruction so that they can do it. And in turn, that progression will really support find and copy a word as they move into key stage one and two for that progression skill. Um, once they've done the find and point, and I'm not saying they have to do it all, it would definitely be on interest. Then it will be fine and point to something that flies in the sky. So what we're doing now is we're not being specific about what they choose and they have to find that something in the sky or find and point to something with four wheels. If you're doing it with more than one child, this is brilliant because um, they, they can choose two different things. But if it's fine and point to the double decker bus, they're both gonna go for the bus. But if we open it up, find and point to something with four wheels, they can have a bit of discussion about what they picked. And then we, then we bring in a little bit of their opinion. So it'll be find and point to something that travels quickly. And, and that will depend on their age and experience. So don't be put off by that because I was doing this activity with some reception children um, in Milton Keynes, I think it was, or somewhere in the South. And a little boy picked the camel as something that traveled quickly. And I looked and said, does a camel travel quickly? And he said that when he'd been on holiday, a camel had raced past him on the beach and it was way quicker than him. 
So I think we've got to take into perspective that our younger children may think a camel is the quickest form of transport on that picture, even if we don't. And then asking them to find and point to something that members of the family would like to go home in and give their reasons. So what would your mum like to go home in and tell me why? Um, lots of children choose the limousine for their mum for different reasons because she deserves a treat or because she likes to go to parties so it's about them exploring their reasons and then maybe find and point to something that keeps you healthy and that's real you know can this child infer what form of transport will keep them healthy so there's pages on food clothes shoes animals and even the back page is on beds so um, I'm just going to very quickly finish, I'm just before I finish, I'm just going to talk about a reception child who, when we were doing the characters from Red Riding Hood, and I asked the children, um, you know, what bed would we put grandma in? Because we could see that the wolf was in one of the beds here. So we talked about which bed would be for Red Riding Hood, which bed would be for grandma. And two reception boys put grandma on this fold out uncomfortable metal bed. And my instinct as an adult was, that's a bit mean putting grandma there. And when I asked them why, their justification was so Santa can look after her because he's right next to the bed. So again, we have to we have to ask them why. Now they might very well have said something else, but in that in that situation, their justification was well deserved. So I shall upload the resource to go with it. You'll have to get yourself a copy of you choose. There's also the you choose in space, but I've not written any resources on that one. Um, so if you want to sign up to the channel and then you'll be able to get any uploads when I put them on there. But thank you for watching. Bye.